All right, in this video, I'm gonna explain kind of a quick and easy way to set your mechanical timing on a stock motor. Uh, this is more towards newer spec or stock racers. This is a rabbit hole that can get very deep tuning spec motors and I don't wanna get into all that. Uh, this is more of a, what's a good safe place to start? Um, brand new motors out of the box they might come ready 20 degrees other manufacturers might come at 30 degrees that's just a good default setting how the motor comes they're not going to get a lot of complaints they're not going to get a lot of people burning their motors up um, but we want to advance that timing to try to get um, a little more power out of the battery all the research I've done a lot of people suggest a 6 amp draw um, it's going to be a good sweet spot, maximizing your power without risk of melting your equipment down. Uh, an instance this might be used is, let's say, my wingless car. Uh, I don't run a lot of spec, but when I go to Chili Bowl, I like to run the wingless class. You stand in line for an hour, Scotty's going to hand you a brand new motor in a box, and then you're going to have about eight minutes of track time over two practices to be as fast as you can. Uh, a race like that, you can go to a motor tuner, a Matt Murphy, or someone who's got a lot of equipment and a lot of experience who can get you really dialed in. But for guys that don't have that option, this is a great way to do it with a cheap multimeter. This one I got from Lowe's, it's like 15 bucks. Make sure you got a 10 amp socket. Uh, we're basically going to wire this up in line with just a couple of spare bullets and a little bit of motor wire. Um, so let me plug this thing together and uh, show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to bring this guy in here. Make sure you utilize that 10 amp socket. I'm going to go ahead and plug that into my positive end of my battery into the 10 amp socket. Negative lead I'm going to run and just clamp onto my bullet and kind of set it out of the way over here. So when I turn the car on, I got no transponder, but I do have a couple fans, so we'll we'll be able to see the amp draw those fans are also pulling. I'm going to go ahead and move this dial over to the 10 amp setting, and then we're going to turn the car on. So right out of the gate, you can see we're pulling about 0.7 amp. I'm going to pull these fans and disconnect them so we get a better true reading of what the motor's pulling at full throttle. So let's start with just pulling the lead to my motor fan back here. Okay, that's already dropped us down a significant amount. Next one, I'm going to go ahead and pull my speedo fan here. Okay. So now the amps that we have left is kind of just the residual voltage, I guess, running through the electronics. Right now the motor stock as a reedy comes, I think this is a 10.5 motor, um, but it'll be great for 17.5, 13.5 alike. Um, comes factory at 20 degrees. Let's see what kind of amps we're pulling without knocking the car off the bench. I do this with tires on so it can kind of represent the full load of the car. Um, but there are read about 3.4 amps. We're looking to get a little bit of closer to 6 amps. Um, so let's go ahead and loosen up our back plate just to fuzz. And we're going to bump this up just 10 degrees to start with. And we'll see what the difference between 20 and 30 degrees does. So now we're at 30 degrees. So 20 degrees, we're at 3.4 amps. I think that read about 4.2 amps at 30 degrees. Like I said, we're looking for a flat 6 amps as a good starting point. You go higher than that, I mean, you're going to risk starting to overheat some things. Let's just see what 40 degrees will do for us. We 
getting really close. We were running 6-6-1. Six, six, I'm just going to back it off just a skosh. Right about 39, 39 and a half degrees. Loosen that just a fuss more. Just a fuzz too much out. We can go a little more precise than that. So right there we were hitting about a 6 amp draw. Now I can plug my fans back in throw my tires on the track, the rest comes down to gearing. Um, you can still overheat your car with gearing, so you know, be careful, but as far as mechanical timing goes, this is a great spot to start. Thanks for watching.